Welcome to the second part of chapter one. The chapter one slide deck is larger than all the other slide decks because at this point in the semester I'm assuming you don't have the textbook. So let's cover the key points and the highlights and the important stuff which you can go back and revise when you have the text. So what are we looking at in part B? We're looking at the classification and the way in which we describe services. Now one of the things that's really important to understand is that we spend a lot of time and effort in terms of trying to cluster service product offers into similar types and categories. Classification is very important and very useful in marketing, although it can be a little frustrating at times to students who are going, why do we care? Why do we care if it's, you know, fits this box, not that box. The answer is we care because when we classify services and we can look at like services, similar services, or services that have similar characteristics and character traits, we can either identify competitor products, competitive offerings, and we can see what theories fit together and what ideas work with one service type that may not work with another service type. So the two, the first two things we need to talk about are the difference between the service product and customer service. Now in the introduction to marketing, you would have come across the core augmented and actual product, the total product concept. In many physical objects, augmented product lineup they would have included the word service. And what you're looking at there was the use of the service techniques to provide an augmentation to the ownership of a physical product. So service augmentation of owning a physical car is the warranty service, the 1,000 mile check, the 10,000 mile check. So there are customer services that support a product and that product is usually transferred in ownership. The services marketing product, the services product, is the core offer. It's the core product, it doesn't confer ownership, and a service product can have a customer service element as an augmentation. And when we get to that, we call it the, um, there's the Lovelock Flower Service that describes it. So what we're looking at here is the first distinction, first point where we divide between two different approaches that can use the same theories. But for us, of interest is the service product. That's the dominant interest this semester. The next division that we really emphasize is the balance between the tangibility and the intangibility. Now, the more tangible a value offering is, the more likely we are to refer to it as the goods, the more intangible the offering, the more likely it is to sit firmly in the services. In the middle though, you can balance an equal amount of goods and services and be one or the other, depending on what the focus and the priority in the product design is. So in the model that's on screen, we talk about fast food restaurants being in the balance between intangible and tangible. So it's the reason you go to the restaurant. If you're going to the restaurant drive through for its convenience, then that's the service dominating because what you're buying is less the hamburger and more this is already cooked. If you're going to a fast food restaurant for a specific meal, that you are particularly keen, you've heard that the Nando's has a new menu, you're going there for a product on the menu, it is not the service, it's the good that you're after. The good is augmented by the service. Similarly, the drive through the service is augmented by the goods. So you want to be thinking about this, what's the priority, what is it the customer is buying? Convenience, or are they buying a service, or are they buying a physical good? So that will help you determine which one is where the emphasis should be. 
So in a couple of the fundamentals that we need to address, there are differences between goods and services. Top of the list of things that, and there's a lot of detail on the text about this, so I'm going to push you back. When you got your copy of the text, go read it. Top of the list, simultaneous production and consumption. Right here, right now. As you are watching this, and you are co-producing, you're taking your notes, or you're thinking about it, or you're, you know, you're listening to it whilst you're looking at the slide deck, simultaneous production and consumption. It's also, even though I'm using a pre-recorded video, this is a simultaneous production consumption moment of, I have to be here producing this to record it in real time and to use the embedded service of the computer, to use the software on the computer, I'm here having to record it. So it's simultaneous production whilst I am consuming the recording software. That's my product that I'm using. Uh, my, so my service software is the video recording software that I'm using. Simultaneous production consumption right now. The other elements that are important to understand is that goods are homogenous by design. It's a feature of the good, like feature of the physical object is they're all supposed to be the same. Unless you make a specific fuss and feature of it of, hey, welcome to random land, your product will be randomized. Most of the time when you crack open a 600 ml bottle of water, you expect it to be full of water. It's unlikely to have scorpions, unless you're selling a feature. Whereas in services marketing, it's heterogeneous. So you come to class and on the way to class, your lecturer has had a bad day. So your lecturer gets up and they're performing a bit flat. Or on the way to class, the lecturer happened to have, on the way through, stopped off, happened to have a particularly lucky uh, turn of events, maybe found some cash on the ground, maybe won a lottery ticket, something like that. They come in with a spring in their step and it's the performance of a lifetime. Because services are delivered by people and people are variable and they're consumed simultaneously by people and people are variable, most of the time you don't get the same service twice. You get the same service performance or the same service event for example, you go to a hairdresser, you're going to get a haircut. But if you go in with a very short hair, you're going to get a different production from if you go in with very long hair. So there's a lot of variation and it's a feature. It's something we actually turn into a real strength of services through customization. Third on the list is the intangibility. Now software sits well down on the service end of the spectrum even though you need a physical object. So you've got an iPhone, the iPhone is a physical object, but the applications that run on the iPhone are intangible. Facebook doesn't exist insofar as you can't take a couple of kilos of Facebook with you. You can't physically pick up and touch Facebook, but you interact with Facebook and it's an intangible product. So again, intangibility is a feature. It means that you are removed from some of the problems you have in physical goods in terms of warehousing and logistics, but you also gain some of the problems that you don't have when you've got physical goods. So intangibility also links up to simultaneous production and consumption and to the heterogeneity. And believe me, when you do services marketing for long enough, homogeneous and heterogeneity are just two words that are just like part of the vocabulary. They're not they're just there. You don't really realize it until you start talking to people who haven't done services marketing. Like, oh, yeah, it's four months of heterogeneous event. And they're looking at you going, what? Yeah, it'll happen. It's a feature. Final thing, perishability. Now, what you need to understand is that physical goods are perishable. Services have perishability. If a service is not consumed, that service is lost. So there is no capacity to stockpile services. If there's no one in the hairdresser all day, it's not like they can pre 
prepare and build a stock of haircuts that can be applied to customers who come in tomorrow. So perishability is about the fact that if a service is not being used or a service provider is not actively serving a customer, that service capacity is lost. It's also one of the first commercial applications of time travel will be to resolve perishability, to go back and fill up unused spaces in people's service calendar. Second application of time travel is going to be tourism. You imagine how much money people would pay to be able to go back and see the Beatles play live? What a service. How the differences also manifest between goods and services is important. As we mentioned before, the four characteristic differences will now manifest in terms of various impacts. So services don't have don't require infantry and don't have infantry, which means they're both perishable, but they're also skill-based, so you have less warehousing, less requirements. You can be more portable. If you can move your if it's skill-based and delivered by a person, if you move your person to the point of consumption, you have production. Intangibility leads the product designs. What this means is that we're talking about services as products that are based on processes, on expertise, on the creation of experience, or on the delivery of attitude. If you think about this course, intangibility is a central part of this subject. Even these videos, whilst they certainly tangibilize and produce a level of consistency, you still can't physically, you don't physically have the video. And the interactions, the experience, you're coming through this, and you're doing this subject to change as a person. So your experiences are the things, it's not about the notes you take or the books you buy, it's about the way you change as an individual through learning. Consequently, services are really difficult to, to visualize and preview. Pretty much, the difference between services and physical goods is that if you say to someone, imagine a bottle of water, they can think of a bottle of water. If you then say to someone, imagine a haircut, There are a bunch of other parameters that need to take place. Imagine a hairdressing experience. Imagine a bungee jumping experience. Imagine an adventure holiday. Imagine a holiday. There are difficulties in visualization and there are difficulties in previewing services. So this impacts on product quality perception and product evaluation. If it's difficult for you to imagine the product, it's also difficult for you to establish what your expectations are going to be. And we deal with that particular uh, framework when we talk about these three types, three quality levels. And this is a significant. I mean, of the models that we cover in the first chapter, this is one of the ones with a huge impact. So search, experience, and credence. These come up again in chapter two. But the search basically is anything that you can evaluate in advance. The experience is only able to be evaluated during or after the service. And the credence has characteristics that are difficult to evaluate. So ease of evaluation, difficulty of evaluation, the easier it is to evaluate, the more likely it is that it's goods or it's physical goods because there is something there. There is the test. There are the multiple sensors involved. There's the ability to know that when you see one object, you will see like objects. So this is services have their uh, how should we say challenges here because they are difficult to evaluate. And a credence product also requires a high level of skill to deliver and those be 
because those are high skill, as an individual, you may not have sufficient skills and capacity to evaluate the service. Now, as I said, we come back to these in chapter two. So let's talk about one of the other points of where difference manifests itself. Co-production is a key feature. In fact, this subject's been designed around co-production. Which means you're now a partial employee of the subject. Self-service tasks. So for you for this semester, doing the readings, answering the questions, reading the textbook, these are self-service activities. Watching these videos, self-service activity. Your engagement, the extent to which you take on this role as a partial employee of the subject and you participate in the co-production will determine a lot of the outcomes of the subject for you. So the co-production is a feature. Consequently, people are inherited in the process, the consumer, staff and other customers, and particularly the other customers aspect when you come to the tutorials. If you have done the readings and the people around you haven't done the readings, then the discussion becomes difficult because they are not co-producing. And the tutorials, we sell each student to the other student as a feature. So customer interaction, group participation, group assignments, all of these are co-production with others. And that is how the subject's going to manifest. You also note the simultaneous production and consumption is going to take place a lot in this subject. There are going to be points in the classroom where you are consuming the experience of higher education whilst producing the experience of higher education. Now, table 1.3, uh, it's, it's on the deck, it's in the slides. It's here to give you a chance to look over the ways in which goods and services differ. Now, one of the things that you want to consider is that the literature review is going to address, you know, this is a common point to argue between the differences of goods and services. So this is an important table, a lot of highlights, and good starting points, good trigger points for thinking. All right, final two elements is the text does cover a lot of different classifications. And so if we think about this in terms of tangibility, who or what is the recipient of the service? Where does the service take place? Is the service designed to be as customized as possible? So it's very skills and experience centric, or is it designed to be standardized where it is the delivery of physical objects? Or oh, there's a lot of routine behavior in it. Are you building a service that's just one time? or are you building a service that's going to be ongoing? And hence, are you one-off? So you're looking for relationships because you are continuous, or transaction because it's a one-off. Discrete act, job done. And the level of people, the high contact, low contact. Now this part of the text is a preview of what some of the areas that's going to be, some of the discussions that later in the chapters, it becomes really important to be able to separate out the different types. So the reason why with classifications it gets its own slide deck and why it matters is services theory is not universal. You can't have a one size fits all. So you have to adapt your methods to fit your product. You need to know your classifications so you can look for like and similar. You can look for appropriate tools and techniques to adapt across. And you can link together and have a sense of a service of a similar nature encountered these problems and found these solutions. I should look at these solutions because I am likely to encounter similar problems. All right, following up this section, uh, your to-do list. Obviously, watch this video, look at the readings, get your book chapter, get your book, read the chapter. Definitely go over the classifications, get familiar with classifications. 
There is a question attached to this block of this block of content, uh, so you want to be looking at that. And start generating the notes. Start reading, writing, get used to const that constant. Here is a piece of information. I should document it, annotate it, and see where it fits into the rest of my notes. So that's part B of chapter one.